everyone. This is Dr. Paz, and um, I. some of you had questions as to how to start the um, SUA project, so hopefully this helped you, except that we are not going to use the Armand Dalton site. We're going to do everything in D2L. The next thing is I do recommend you see the check figures here, and then you see the details of the packet that you have in the SUA. This also helps you follow the first three transactions, which the first two don't really require any posting, but the third one does. So let's go into the project itself and let me show you what you need to do. So you have four files here, but basically you're going to be submitting the student template and the grading rubric. So let's download both of those. And then here is the grading rubric. And you see here that it's the 200 points. And what you're gonna do here is you're going to click through each one of these and you're going to put in your solution. So whatever you put in here, if you get it correct, I'll give you two points. If you don't get it correct, then you can, might get partial credit, but you wanna make sure that you go through each of these tabs and that you fill in all of those solutions because that's the first thing I'm going to grade. And it's asking you a bunch of balances and accounts and things of that nature. So you wanna make sure that you know that. So basically you're gonna go through each of these and make sure that you put all of your answers in your solutions here and then your general journal. So that's the main item that I'm grading. But then you also have your student template and this is where you're going to get all of your information and I give you your check figures here as well. And so basically what you're gonna do here is go through this transaction list and make sure you know how to record them. So the first transaction tells you that you received a validated deposit receipt from the bank for $7,931.96 for your deposit that you made on December 14th. And it tells you here, you're just gonna follow the flow chart. You're gonna look at your cash receipts pre-list, but you're gonna file this in a temporary file. So we're not doing any recording here. Then you're gonna go on the 18th as well. And then here you ordered the following inventory on account from Velocity Sporting Goods, but since no receiving or recording occurs at this point for this transaction, so you don't have to do anything. All right, but now the first transaction here is we borrowed $60,000 from First American Bank and Trust, and we issued a two-year note payable. And so here's the document 14 and the document eight. That's what you're looking in the SUA to record that. Those are your source documents, and that's what you need in order to record this in here. And it says you have a 5% interest rate, so you received check number 545 for $60,000, and that was deposited. So in that case, what we're doing is, let me show you. So um, basically, we are going into your cash receipts. So you have sales and cash receipts journal, and you're going to record right here your $60,000. So you have to know what you're doing, right? You're debiting cash and you're crediting notes payable. So here you have a debit to cash for 60,000, and then you have a credit for 60,000 to notes payable. And so that is what you're doing here. You're going to take all of those source documents and then you're going to record them. So you're gonna have your payroll journal and then you're going to make sure that it ties into this. You're gonna have your purchases and your, um, let me make this a little bit bigger for you, your purchases and your cash disbursements journals. We just went over your cash receipts journal. So all you're doing is recording each of these transactions and then you're gonna to have to do your general journals as well and then that's coming a little bit later, and then you're gonna have your fixed asset journal as well. So basically, this is a full accounting information systems. It's just not, it's manually, right? So you're linking all of these subsidiary ledgers, like your employee subsidiary ledger, your pay history, your accounts receivable subsidiary ledger, anything that happens in your sales and cash receipts is going to be recorded here if it relates to a customer account in your AR subsidiary, anything that happens in your purchases and cash disbursements, if it relates to a vendor, is going to be recorded here in your accounts payable subsidiary. Then you have your general ledger, anything that you record right here in your general journal, you're gonna post all of those transactions into your general ledger. Then you have your post-closing trial balance, which we know should only have your balance sheet and accounts because your income statements accounts are um, temporary. Then you have a year-end worksheet, and this is pretty much the whole uh, scenario that you need, right? It has your post-closing trial balance, your unadjusted trial balance, the adjustments that you made via your general journal, and then your income statement and your balance sheet, and then that will transcribe into your income statement and your balance sheet here as well. 
And so these are just some of your check figures. So several of you, so that's all you're doing is you're taking what you've done in certain pieces and then just bring them over and then make sure that you're doing it in the subsidiary ledgers and then across the board. And then this is just your bank reconciliation as well. So hopefully this helps you get started and you can see and then you know how to complete your uh, Excel. Thanks for watching.